The circle is the strongest shape, and today we'll put our eclipse sequence into a circular collage. Maybe I shouldn't have teased you with the animation because that's not the point of this video. But some of you may be able to figure out exactly how I did it by the end. But I will show you how to crop out the eclipse, including two images with the diamond ring, how to equally space things out, and then seamlessly blend everything together. How you orient and position your sequence is totally up to you. And in the tutorial, I placed my diamond rings in the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions, but after I was done, I put them in the 5 o'clock and 11 o'clock position because that's kind of how we saw it in real life. Credit for that idea goes to my wife, and I think it looks much better than 3 and 9. So let's get started. So I already went and collected a bunch of images that will go around the circumference of my clock face and one in the center. I have 28, so I need to pick 13. 12 for the circumference and one for the center. And I think I'm, I'm not going to do the, the first and last contacts. So I think I'll start here. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six. This will be the diamond ring on one side. This will be the center. This will be the diamond ring on the other side. Uh, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. I think this is pretty even. And I am going to. I'm just gonna cut them and then I'm just gonna create a. Deuce. Put them in this folder so that I don't forget. And we have the other ones here. Okay, great. 15 that I did not use. Okay. And now we have these. And now we'll open up Photoshop. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open all those in a stack. It'll be easier to work with than to import them one by one. So we'll do scripts, load files into stack. Here it is. I'll click here. I'm just going to select all of them. Click OK. Do not align. We don't need to align them for this. All right, I have all of them. So the trick I showed you last time to get this cut out is if you do select color range and you select shadows, it'll select the outside, everything but the sun. So you can click OK. And you can see that it did a really good job of selecting the sun, but we may want to feather it out a little bit. So the way to do that is to do select you can do control sh control shift i or click on this inverse here and then we'll do select modify expand we'll expand by let's say yeah three pixels is good and then we'll filter feather so we'll do select modify feather a little feather by like i don't know let's say three pixels we don't need to do too much great and then we'll uh, you can cut this out now, or we can go to select, inverse again, select the, the outer area, and then do delete. And now if we hide the rest of them, you can see that we have just the sun and a little bit of the outside because of the feather. And it kind of, it, it looks nice. It, it got the whole sun, a little bit of the glow, and that's all we need. And now I need to do the same thing for most of these. So I'll do it for the partial phases, but for the diamond ring one, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. And for this one, which will be my centerpiece, it will just stay as is. I'm not going to touch this. It'll just be in the centerpiece. Uh, it would have been better if it was centered, but obviously it didn't happen, and that's okay. Uh, and I'm going to have the same. I have to be careful with this diamond ring as well, because I want to get you know, the, the glow. Uh, and also, if I do shadows, it'll select the center as well. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to quickly get through the rest of them, and then we'll pause and do the three totality images. All right, so I actually ended up creating a, uh, a Photoshop action called Extract Sun that just did all the steps I showed you. So I only need to do one more manually, and then the other eight uh, were done, or seven were done automatically using the Extract Sun Photoshop action. So okay, so we have those now. We have all of these. You can see them, so we'll save those. And now we're going to do our totality images or diamond ring and totality manually. So what you can do is you can try the same method of going to color range and shadows. You can see that it's a little bit confused on what it wants to select. Um, and there is a glow around this. So the best way can be to try and use the magic wand tool here and just start selecting these things. So if you hold shift, you can see that the little plus button comes up and it'll start selecting more. So I'm just going to select the glow, I'll select the sun as well, or the moon, the eclipse. 
Let's look outside. And if I zoom in, you can see that it, it did pretty good. And I'll use the regular marquee, whoops, regular marquee to select the so that I get the edges of the eclipse. Okay, and then now what we can do is we'll just feather it. So we'll just select modify feather. I don't know, I'll do like seven pixels or something. So we have that. And then now we're going to do inverse. So select inverse or control shift I, and then I'll do delete. So now we have that. Great. And we'll blend this in later. And then we'll do the same thing for this last one here. So control D to deselect. Select my magic wand and try and select crazy. So we'll do select modify feather, seven pixels, sure. And then we'll do um, inverse and then delete. Okay. okay. We have our images and this one will be the middle. Okay. So we have our images prepared and now we're going to create a new file. Uh, it's best working with square files, especially if we're working with circles. Um, you can work with other files. I'll just, you'll see why a square file is good. So I'm just going to create one that's uh, 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. That should be more than good enough. Uh, I can also go to 10,000 by 10,000, but we'll do this. So before we continue, I want to make sure that you have, you go to view, you want to make sure that snap is selected and make sure that checkbox exists. And then on snap two, you want to make sure guides and layers are selected. It'll work out a little bit easier when we start working uh, with these images. So I have them selected all the time by default. So if you don't have those selected, make sure you do. And then we're going to go to guides, view guides, and we're going to do a new guide layout. You can see that from my previous work, there's already a square, lots of square grids. So I did 16 by 16. You want to do like a square of four just to keep things even. It's a little bit easier, um, especially for me, who's uh, probably not the greatest at patterns. You can also do 20 by 20 uh, if you want finer controls. Uh, but I think 16 by 16 is good. Maybe even 12 by 12 or something, but something square. So we have our grid here. And the first thing I'm going to create is I'm going to click on circle tool. Where is the tool? The polygon tool. We're going to go to the ellipse tool here. And the center, you can kind of eyeball where the center is. It's like here. So you want to select, put your cursor there. If you have snap click, create, uh, clicked on, it'll automatically snap to the center. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on, I'm going to click and drag and start creating a circle. And you can see that, you know, it becomes an oval. So if you hold shift, it becomes a perfect circle no matter how you do it. And if you hold alt, it starts from the center and it starts expanding. And you can kind of see that it's snapping to the grids for me. And that's cool, right? And you can see that I did not start at the center. So lesson learned, I need to go up one. So I'm gonna control Z, get rid of that. And this is the center here. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, click here, expand, shift, and then alt. And now you can see that it's in the center. So I'm gonna go not all the way, I'll do it up to here. I created a circle. All right, it has a fill. I'm gonna make the fill nothing. And then the stroke, it has a stroke. I'll just do like, I don't know, like, um, like all right, I'll just do five pixels for now, right? If you select away from it, you can see that it, you can see a five pixel radius. We'll get rid of the grids later. It'll be a lot easier to see. Okay, so now we need to mark like 12 places. So if you look, if you eyeball it, you can see that, you know, like a one point is here, one point is there. We have our 12, three, six and nine o'clock there. And then here it gets a little bit harder. And the trick I use is if I go back to the, the uh, drawing tool, there is a polygon tool. And for the polygon tool, for the numbers here, if you want to have 12 images on the circumference, use 12. So it's like a, it's a not dodeca, it's a decahedron or something. Dodecahedron. No, that's a three dimensional, whatever it's called, 12 sided hexagon. Um, if you want to do more, you do more. If you want to do less, you do less. I'm going to do 12 and I'm going to start at the center again. It's going to be the same trick. So, you know, expand out, shift, and then alt, and it starts expanding out. And because I have snap to grid enabled, you can see that it snaps to where I want it to be. So I'll just let go. 
has a stroke of five already. So there we go. So now what we can do is we can go to view, guides, clear guides. So now we have our circle and we have 12 points where we can place our suns. Uh, but of course I want, you know, one of the points to be at the top, you know, the 12, nine, six and three o'clock positions. So the way to do that is if you select your polygon, make sure transform is selected. Uh, you can do control T or you can go to, if you don't see that, you can do edit and then free transform, trans, uh, yeah, the free transform path, you control T. And then once you have this enabled, uh, you can edit the angle. I think if I do 90 degrees, it'll shift it enough for me. 90 degrees, oh, 90 degrees, and now do it 45. There we go, 45 degrees, math, yay. Okay, so now if I look, you can see that now it's perfectly at the different clock positions. And now, all right, so now we can go back to our first file here and select all of these layers. Make sure they're all selected. Do control C to copy go back to our new file, do control V to paste all the layers. I get a warning about a uh, different depth between the two documents, press yes. And we have all of these here. I'm going to hide most of these and work on just the totality, which will be my centerpiece first. And I'm just going to try and move it to the center. I accidentally hit the background. All right, I'm gonna try to move it to the center. And one easy way of doing this to make sure that you are centered is if you click here and drag out, you can create a new guide. And if you have snap on, you'll see that it snaps right to the middle. So 2,500 pixels. Yep. And then the same thing, if you go to the top, click and drag down and it'll snap to the middle. And now I can go here. So I'll actually make this a little bit bigger. I'll go here. And then I'll try and center the eclipse as best as I can. And I think this is it. Yeah. All right. So I'm happy with this. I'll press OK. So now we can get rid of the guys or leave them here. So I'm just going to click and drag them out of view and they disappear. And then we're going to start working on the rest of the clock here. And there are a couple ways, few ways you can do the design, actually unlimited ways that you can do the design. And it's totally up to you, the artist who is working on this, whatever looks good to you, you should do. And what I have in my previous 2017 image is that I don't have any diamond rings on the clock on the face, but I think I'm going to put one on the three o'clock and one on the nine o'clock side. And well, I'll have one going into diamond ring here and another one going into diamond ring here. And I want to turn all of the eclipse images where the moon is face or on this inner side, on the center side, I'll show you what I mean. And so before I press move forward, I, I, I enable this one, so it was enabled this whole time, I guess. And I'm going to move this totality layer to the bottom because I want that as my base layer. So it'll be over background. And I have this selected here. So, it's going to start here and then I'm going to start getting smaller and smaller until I hit the diamond ring here. And then another one on the other side will start here and then it'll keep going until it's diamond ring. Again, the orientation is totally up to you. So I'm just gonna place this here for now and I'm going to click control T so I can get the transform tools here or you can hit one of these little dots here, the square dots and you'll get the transform tools. And I think, let's try for 60%. I think 60% is good, but you can also do 50%. You should uh, play with this and see what settings you like. So I'll do 50% and I'm going to place this here and against the circle here and I'm going to turn it. So if I hover my mouse on the corner here, you'll see that the cursor turns to a, a curved arrow or you can use the option on top here to change the angle, but I'm just gonna click and drag until this kind of faces the sun I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to make sure this thing sits on top of, on the, on the corner here. And I'm actually going to change the opacity for those to 50% so that I can see right through them. All right, all right, all right I'll do 40%, okay. So now I can see right through them, okay. So now if I zoom in, I wanna make sure that, you know, it's touching. And this way we'll get an even distribution uh, of the clock faces, it'll be completely circular. 
Okay, so I think this is good. I eyeball this. You can you know draw lines to make sure that it is perfectly facing the sun, but I think this is fine. All right, one more edit, and make sure this is still sitting. Yeah. Okay, it looks good. Press OK. Okay, so that's one. I'll do the other side, and then I'll skip forward to the rest of them. So I have this one. So this one will stay here. Control T. Change the height to 50% since that's what I chose. I'll zoom in. Hover my mouse over the corner so I can turn it. I think this is facing the eclipse. I'll check in a little bit. But now I'm going to place this here, sitting against the line there. Okay, I think that's good. Zoom out. Okay, now, yeah, now I can see that they're kind of touching. You can see that they're equidistant and they are um, aligned. So I'm going to quickly do the rest of them. I'll fast forward through them. You can see me doing them really fast. Um, and if you have any questions about anything I did, feel free to ask. And I will stop when I get to the diamond rings because I need to do something else special with them. So we'll do that together. Okay, so let's fast forward. Alrighty, so I did uh, five or ten of these, and you know you can see that the moon is all facing the eclipse. I think it looks fine. Um, you know, it looked better in my head. I don't know how I feel about this. If you have any feedback, let me know. And I don't know if I am going to use this as my final print design anyway. So now we're going to work on the last two, which are the diamond rings here and you can see that they're going to be a little bit more difficult because of how it is glowing here it makes the background glow here so it's going to be a little bit more difficult so i'm going to try this anyway so first i'm going to of course control t switch this to 50 percent and i'm going to make the diamond ring on this side go away from the sun because that's the plan and i'm going to try my best to Align it to the edge here. Okay, I think that's good. Opacity, I think. I think that's the edge of the sun, right? Yeah, it looks good. Because the prominence is there. Okay, great. All right, 100% opacity. Okay. All right, so the trick we're gonna do here is we're gonna mask. We need some masking. And the way I am going to do it is you can do it whichever way you feel comfortable with. So I'm going to take this layer, I'm gonna move it below, whoops, I'm gonna move it below my main layer here so that it's hidden under. And I'm gonna click on my layer here, my totality layer, and then I'll click on layer, I'll do layer mask, and then I'll do reveal all. And what this does is it reveals the layer itself. And we can make this reappear uh, by first clicking, making sure that the mask is selected over here. And then we're going to go into our gradient tool here, over here, gradient tool. And I wanna make sure that black to white is selected. So if you click on this uh, option here, under basics, it's gonna be this right one, where you can create your own. And since this is a circle, we have a couple of options. We have linear, we have radial, we have whatever this is, angle, gradient. Uh, we're gonna use the radial radial gradient. So I'm click on this. And I know that the tip of the diamond ring is here, over here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna click here and then I will expand. You can see it's coming out. What? but not too much because you'll see that the uh you can start to see the edges if you do too much so we'll fix that soon okay cool so far so good okay i want to make sure this is selected and then on the right left side i'm going to click on brush tool and you want to make sure black and white is selected so in this case black will reveal it since we this is a reveal all layer so I'm gonna right click and make sure my brush size is pretty big. So I think like, not too big. So like, I think 500 pixels is good. It's a little bit smaller than the size of this eclipse itself. Hardness, uh, well, there are some uh, pr uh, presets you can use. So I think I'll do soft brush, which has a hardness of 0%. Okay, so now I'm just going to just paint it here, just very lightly, I'll just click, oops. 
it's, it's, it's pretty hard. So I'm just going to click very lightly. Because there's a lot of brush strokes and you can see that you can see, we can see some of the edges here. So we're going to hide them. So on the left side, we're going to switch the color on the background foreground colors to white. So now it'll start hiding. So if we go here and I start painting it, you can see they start getting hidden from the outside and then they start to blend in a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna, so, okay, so this is this this is what it looks like. You can see it looks a lot better than it did and it, it, had, it caught the glow. Um, you can, of course, get better results if you spend a lot more time on this. I wish the diamond ring here wasn't so bright, um, but I don't really, can't really do anything about that. Alrighty, so now we have one more left. And before we do anything, I want to make sure I click on the layer mask, right click and click on apply layer mask. And you'll see in the preview here that it kind of, it just applied the layer mask to this. Um, and it's part of the image now. So if I move this, you know, see the whole thing moves along with the mask itself. So control Z. So now we're ready to move on to the last one. So I'll make this layer visible. I'll resize it. Okay. And then I'll move this here and then I'll angle it so that the diamond ring is facing away from the sun, from the eclipse. I'll zoom in, I'll try and guesstimate where it should go. I think that's good enough. There we go, okay. Bring the opacity back up, accept my changes, and I think that's good. So now I'm going to move this below my layer, below my main layer here, so that I can click on my main layer, go to layer, uh, layer mask, and then reveal all mask. And now make sure my mask is selected, and then click on my gradient tool, make sure radial layer is selected and black and white is selected. I'll zoom in here, I'll click here, and then I'll start creating my mask here. And I think, I think this gives me pretty nice detail so far. So now I'm going to click on my brush tool, make sure black is the foreground, and then I'll start clicking around here a bunch to make this more visible up until it starts to look a little bit weird on the edges. And although the, this, the exposure for this is actually better, so I may not even have to make any corrections just to make sure I can see this. And yeah, so I'll select the white foreground. There's some weirdness here, so I'll fix that. Lots of clicking. This absolutely destroys the history. Uh, you lose all the history because it's all just brush strokes. Uh, it's okay. So I think, there we go. So I think this is good. So I can click on, right click here and click on apply a layer mask so that it all kind of blends in. So we have this. And I think this looks pretty good. So if I turn off my ellipse and polygon, you can see that it's pretty centered. Um, maybe this is a little bit too big, uh, but for now it's fine just to show you the concept of how to do something like this. Uh, I think this is perfect. And the one thing I can do is to fix the background here is I'm gonna click on you know, the background so that I can do a new layer above this. If I click on, I'll click on layer, new fill layer, I'll do solid color. And then color one, sure, whatever. I'm gonna put it over the background. And I'm going to use the, uh, the drop tool, the, um, the color picker. I can't zoom in, of course not. I want to click like the edge of this. I think this is actually pretty good. Then press OK. And I can crop this off. And right, then to fix this weirdness here, what we can just do is select, make sure you select this layer here. And then you can click on like a rectangular marquee tool. And then we can do this. All right, and then delete. And voila, and that goes away. And then of course there's like other kinds of blending that you can do to make this look a little bit cleaner. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. You know, we have two diamond rings. We have a totality picture in the middle. You can replace this with an HDR totality, uh, which I may end up doing before I print this out. 
Uh, but this is just one concept, so I hope this was somewhat helpful in showing you how you can do like a quick circular pattern. As I mentioned earlier, the final product has the diamond rings on the 5 o'clock and 11 o'clock positions. The orientation and positioning for the collage can really be anything. And originally I planned on putting one of my HDR edits at the center, but I think after looking at this for a little while, I think the way it is, is perfectly fine. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about any of the techniques I showed you, please feel free to ask. Until next time, enjoy the hypnotic rotating eclipse sequence.